I am going to have to change a couple of things. Well, we talked about this last time, though, for um, the um, conference. Since the conference has slid one way, I'll have to change a couple of things. But I'll do that in a little bit. Um, in the meantime, so yeah, because we'll have, we're not having class, so that'll be, we're just doing conferences, okay? Exactly. Come to conference or or don't, it, depending on whether you're signed up, right? But oh, don't come to class. I checked it this morning and I saw that we were doing workshop. I was like, oh, so don't come to class. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no coming to class, okay? And I'll get this fixed at online this afternoon, okay? That'll be my job to make sure now it matches the other one. So, yeah, this is why scheduling is, this is why when, when people don't read their schedule, teachers are like, it's not like you just write it down and you're like, oh, it's done, right? Like, it takes me hours and hours to, like, work on a schedule. And, yeah, it's, it's a huge thing. So. It looks easy. Yeah, first time I did it, I was like, ah, oh, this will be easy. And then three days later, I'm like, this is serious work. Because <laughs> if you did this here and that here and all that. So, anyway, um, all right, so questions about 1301 that we just finished? Um, the nice thing is, you notice we're doing a summary response. Y'all are all ready to do that, right? I mean, so this is definitely, I mean, this is what you've already done. If, you, if it helps you to use the form that we're using, you know, the purple one, I have more copies always, <laughs> okay? Um, just to do kind of ideas for it, you might want to do that or you can do it on your own paper. Point is, by the time you're done, you know how to do this all by yourself, right? So, um, yeah, so we're reading through this, some of this. We've probably read, but you know, go back through, do some, some reading, that kind of thing. Notice here this says read these parts, just skim this, read this, right? So, you know, read the instructions so you're not reading. I mean, because some of, a lot of this, like with the how to cite things, that's reference stuff. And so you want to discriminate when you're reading for a class, what is stuff you need to read and know, oh, here's what's there and here's where I'm going to go to find it. And I just kind of remember that and I go back and I look that up versus, oh, this is stuff I really kind of need to internalize and know more. Um, and so any of the documentation stuff we're doing, that's reference stuff. You know, reading about the commas, this and that, that's reference too because the more you do it, the better you get about it coming natural and you don't have to think about it. But there are always those moments when you do want to go back and say, wait, do I want a period or a comma in the fanboys, or do I want a semicolon or colon or dash here or whatever? You know, those kinds of things. So um, that's where you want to do that discrimination. So. But anyway, y'all are doing um, a number of, a couple, of, we're doing a, a summary response here, and then later on in the course when we go to, and we do our second um, essay conference, we'll also be doing one then, all right? And so one of the things you can do also is, um, we're writing six for this course, for the 311 course, but we'll be writing two for 1301. For your portfolio, you can choose from any of those for which ones you want to revise and work on and clean up, okay? So, cool. I'll even let you substitute a grade for a draft for one of them, you know, let you use it as a pass if there's one you're like, oh, mm, mm, is that 311 one? No, no, no. I, I read it. I want you to read all the stuff, but if you read it and you're like, I don't want to write a summary response about this, you can say, hey, use that, that summary response from 1301 and I'll put the grade in there, okay? Right. You need to have written six of them, okay? That's the big thing. Cool. All right. Um, okay. Excellent. Excellent. So we're good with. Well, I can close up 1301 and say we're good with that. Okay. So we decided no coming to class on Friday, even though the schedule shows that. I'll fix that in a little bit while we're working on a few things here because we're talking about planning and drafting. But I do want to go through a little bit of the. Um, the agreement stuff, perhaps, if it'll come up. I did just upload it, and these slideshows like this sometimes are like totally um, picky about showing up. So, 
And remember the, the grammar page has the, the grammar slideshows. So if you want to go back and look at them or review them, you can. Watch this. We could go to the OG <coughs> original. Oh my goodness gracious. Just don't do that double screen thing to me. No, I tell you every time. Don't do this. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's talk about a few of these just real quick, and then I'm going to have you kind of share your ideas for your um, summary response, what you have, your notes so far, and then I'll come around, and if you want me to look at any of your grammar or your citation or anything like that, um, so that you're ready to turn that in, you know, during conference time. Cool? All right, so agreement, there are just a couple of things. This, this slideshow used to be 56 slides long, which was painfully long, and I'm like, why the hell did I ever do that? But actually, it's because some of those grammar issues were things that were people were more picky about. But over the last 20 years, it has literally changed. So what I have narrowed it down to are things that, um, come on, there we go. Um, things that really kind of stand out. So the real quick easy one is, you know, agreements about the, like, the student wants to go home, right, or the students want to go home. So that's one of the, the kind of first levels of agreement, and that one's usually really easy, I mean easy. There are a couple of times it can get tricky, and so here's one of them, one of them, and this one's still pretty easy. But she and her friends, would we say she and her friends is at the fair, or she and her friends are at the fair? Are, right? Now, if it was just she, we'd say she is. We'd say they are, right? And we know this is she and her friends, so we could substitute they. That's easy. But sometimes you'll have a sentence where you have, like, one thing and then a lot of them, and it may not be this and. It may be she or her friends. That means either one person's at the fair or many people are at the fair, right? So what are we going to say then? She or her friends? Are we going to say is or are? Mm -hmm. oh. are. Are just sounds a little better, doesn't it? She or her friends are at the fair. What we do is we match it to the one that's closest here, right? Friends are. So she or her friends, right, instead of she and her friends, friends still matches that R. So if it's like that kind of situation where it's like, wow, this doesn't match either one, just match the one closest, that's the rule. Okay, I like rules like that. Okay. Um, this is another example, the book or the pen are in the drawer. The book or the pen is in the drawer. Now you have to visualize what's in the drawer. How many things is this sentence say is in the drawer? Two. Mm -hmm. Or. Yeah, right? It's just one. And I was like, I don't know what's in the drawer. It's either the book or the pen, right? And so in that case, we've got to just kind of say the book or the pen is in the drawer. So it's just going to be the one, right? Here's another one. The chapters, including all, the book, including all the chapters in the first section, is boring, are boring. Because it's book and there's chapters. But what are these commas doing here? Those are there. It's not a list, right? Not looking up two full sentences, so that leaves us with our extra information. So what it means is we can take that extra information out, make sure our grammar is solid for the base sentence, and then we can put it back in, right? Because we would say the book is boring, right? That including all the chapters in the first section, yeah, that's just extra. You're talking to somebody and somebody's like, well, the book is boring. And they're like, well, I liked the chapters in the first section. And you're like, no, the book, including all the chapters in the first section, is boring. <laughs> We're not going to argue about this, OK? So there's two ways we can think about this, right? Already we can say, look, if you see extra information and you want to make sure things are matching, there's grammar stuff going on, if grammar is pointing this out to you, again, why do you need to know the rules when you have Grammar check, Grammarly, all this stuff. Well, it's a computer, right? So we've already, I've talked to many of you who said, yeah, Grammarly was, yeah, told me this crazy thing, or I did that because it said so. It's a computer, right? 
languages comes from humans. So, so this way it lets you kind of say, okay, should I take that one or not? And the more you do it, the more natural it becomes, the more fluid you get. So there we go. All right. No. All right, here's another one. We have some nouns that are, can be plural or singular. The class is here. I'm just saying one class, right? Y'all are the class, just like that, right? The committee, it's one thing. I am on the committee for technology, the advisory committee for technology or and something else. There's another letter in there somewhere. So anyway, um, so would we say the committee made its decision? Because the committee's more than one person, right? Or committee made their decision? I don't know why, but I feel like both work, but I'm going to say that the committee made... What's your guess? It's. It's. It's on the notes. I see there. There. Okay. So here again, I'm going to say the trick for this one is picture it. Right? Because the committee is a people? Are people? Well, it's the people, but is that decision one thing or is it many things? It's one thing. It's one thing. If we make a decision that we're just going to all get A's and we'll meet again at the end of the semester and we're going to, you know, write a memo to the dean. It's going to be one decision, right? Mm -hmm. As a class, a class is something lots of you. We have decided we are done learning. We'll meet in the, at the end of the semester. Thank you very much, right? right? So in that case, the class made its decision because it's one thing. But because you are right, too. Both of you are right. Because if it makes a decision, we're working as a unit, it's one thing. But what if we all put our signatures on that? How many signatures are going to be on that letter we're going to send to the boss? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So then it's their signature. So then wait, what was the answer for the first one? The first one is it's, it's because we're acting as one. Is that what I said? That was it's, right? It's, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, and you said there. there. Yeah. And so both of you are right, just different times, right? <laughs> so it's decision, if it's one decision, right? The committee made its decision. But here, if we have the committee put signatures, right? It's not like we all grabbed one pencil. Okay, everybody, hold on. <laughs> the class, right? No, we all put our own names on there, right? And so you can imagine, you see all the different signatures on there. I always picture the Constitution in my head when I, or the Declaration of Independence, John Hancock, with his big signature, right? All of that, right? So in this case, the committee, the class, could be the cast, the team, right? So anytime you have a noun that's like a group of people, sometimes you may have a moment where you go, wait, which way does it go? And so you ask yourself, are they doing things as one? The team won their game. Belongs all to the all of, to all of them, right? We made our decision. Right? The committee took its action, right? but we put our signatures on it. Right? <coughs> the cast did their practice. Wait, now that one didn't work. See, it's so hard. Grammaring on your feet is hard. So just ask yourself, right? Is it people acting as one? and doing one thing all together? Or are they doing their separate parts contributing to it? So I, I like the signatures because I can imagine the decisions written down, one thing right there, and then I can see all our signatures on it. Right? And that's a bunch. So that's what works for me. All right, there we go. OK, then another time we want to do that agreement, and we've talked about this because we've already started doing those summary responses is that we don't say it says. I mean, we say it all the time. Yes, in conversation, all the time. But if we're talking about something we've read, we give that writer's name. Right? And this is that it's vague and unclear, and it's imprecise and nebulous. And it also has to do with that due respect, right? So the author says, or you know, um, Birkenstein and Graf point out, um, like we were doing with this one reading we're doing right now. Um, so we can say it says all day long. Just when we're writing, and especially college writing, we're going to clean that up and be more specific. We could use it with EPCC, their website says. But see, I naturally kind of went to the there. You know, they say, they point out, because EPCC, see? 
Easy, easy, easy. Just two of them, Kelly, that's it. <laughs> we act as a college, right? We're like that committee, that, com that class, that cast, that team, right? When you say EPCC says, is it really just an it, or is it they? There are people behind it. And so the move in writing is definitely to acknowledge people as people and not necessarily as things or entities. And so I think that's a good thing, and it goes back down to that kind of due respect, right? Understand that all of this stuff does come from people. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. <coughs> all right, now, here's a little bit of grammar stuff that's kind of a little more technical. So, but it's pretty simple. This is pretty simple, straightforward. We've got two kinds of pronouns, and this is where there, there's, there's, these are the two other things that with agreement that can get kind of tricky. Um, one is, um, so we have people who are the subject, right? John gave the book to Mary. In that case, the sentence is about John and what he did. He gave the book to Mary, right? And the objects get the action. So John gave the book to Mary. Who got the book? Mary, right? A lot of times in English structure, subjects at the beginning, objects at the end, right? Not always, but a lot of times. So you just kind of let that float in your head. Right? No need to like be like too obsessed with it. Okay. So one of the places we can get really confused is with I and me. But it usually only happens when there are other people in the sentence with us. Here is an example. The teacher told you and I to get out our books. Or would we say the teacher told you and me to get out our books? Who votes for I? Be brave. Okay, anybody that's like a meet on the meet team? Why do you why why do you say I? Because of the how do you call it the possessions how it is? It's what? Possessions how it is, I don't know. That's just how it is. It sounds right to you, right? I mean like part of that. Yeah. It sounds a little more proper. I thought that too, and then I learned this trick, and I went, oh shit, I've been doing that wrong the whole time. <laughs> oh, it's wrong? Yeah, watch, but let me show you how to check it. Because the problem is, what if we get rid of you, for not, not you all right here, right, but the word you, you know, the you and, for just for a moment, and let's check it, because it should work with that or without it, right? Um. The teacher told I to get out my book. Now we're like, oh no, that is so wrong. The teacher told me to get out my book. When I saw that man, you know, the emoji with the head exploding? That was me. So if you take, if you're not sure, if you're like, I got that I me thing, and usually again, grammar check will generally correct that stuff, but if you can get more fluid doing it from the first, it's less work for you to go back through. Because the more a computer messes with your writing, the more you need to read it carefully. Because, you know, especially like AI makes shit up. Last semester, I'm reading this paper with quotes from a story that weren't in the story we read. It was amazing how the story that I have read 20, 30 times already had, all of a sudden, had characters and quotes that weren't in it. Because AI will give you an answer. You ask it, what's the answer to this? It will make shit up to give you an answer. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. When we read that story, I'll actually pull up the samples, the quotes from that, that video and show you so what AI you said know? was in that story. And I'm like, <laughs> is that how you knew they used AI or? Well, yeah, and the voice and the tone. And oh. it just, it sounds computer, right? Do you want to sound computer? Again, you know, I'm sure people get by with it, you know? I mean, I'm not what saying I'm perfect, but in the end, if all you know is how to use the computer, the computer's getting to where it can use itself, right? And so then computers well, are a lot cheaper. Use a computer yeah, but I'm saying if if all you know is that you know, and how to plug things into AI, I mean, right? Who was it who's doing computer programming? Somebody was talking and I was like, look, you need to look into this because AI's gonna take over a lot of programming. Mm -hmm. Good prompting will build good computer programs in the very near future. It's already doing it. So yeah, so I mean, it's gonna take, what's gonna take jobs more than anything, and what always has, has been technology. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll take our jobs. That's why we gotta bring 
some knowledge, right? But also, the more you know this, the more fluid your writing can be, and then you don't have to worry about that shit, right? You let it do some little final polish, but you make sure you're bringing all the good stuff, so. So let's look at this again, because this is fun, all right? Um, so the teacher told me to get out my book. The teacher told you and me to get out our books. Yeah, so it does sound, you know, you and I, fancy, right? But here's the thing, the teacher who did what? In this case, me is the object. You gave it to me, the teacher told me. See, if it was in the subject place, if I told you to get out your books, I wouldn't say me told you to get out your books. So the difference is I is the subject, me is the object. So there's the answer to that question. But Marissa and I are going to get some coffee, or Marissa and me are going to get some coffee. Which one works? Second one. Second one. Oh, wait, let's take out Marissa. Yeah. What happens if we just drop Marissa? I, and we're gonna have to change the R because it's just, I am going to get some coffee. Me am, oh no, but that one doesn't work, right? That's so there we go. I'm going to get some coffee. Me, I'm going to get some coffee. No, uh-uh. No. Okay, so it is Marissa and I, and yeah. me. And you never go no, I first, first, right? What's it? You never Generally, put you put first. the other person first. So Marissa and I. You know, I mean, you can say I and Marissa, but Really, the lenient is to say to put other people first. It's just mm -hmm. kind of polite, mm -hmm. yeah, respectful. So, Marissa and I, unless you're emphasizing yourself, you know, me and Marissa. Okay, so like somehow you wanted that, Marissa and me. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, so that's it. Basically, just if you have that I me and you have that moment when you're like, oh. Shit, I have been thinking that I is correct a lot in places and I get it wrong. Just take out the other people and check it without it. And then put them back in. You know, you'll figure out which one's the right one and put them in. Cool? Same thing we're going to do with who and home because they are also oh. subject object. But most of this grammar check gets, but I just want to show you there is a trick that can help you, okay? And when I found out this trick, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to know it perfectly. Right? But it does also take some practice. So, you know, but the more I do it, the more it registers for me. Okay, so we're going to do a thing here. So we've got home that has the M at the end, and we've got him that has the M. Okay? So we're going to do a real little replacement, kind of like when we got rid of, you know, the other people in the other one. We're going to do a replacement with him or he, because there's him or he. He is the subject of the sentence. I gave it to him. He's the object. So if we end up with the one with the M, then we know we need whom. Same thing. Who is the subject? You gave it to whom? Give it to him. Oh, man. All right. Works. Got those M's in there. Okay. So let's give it a try. Now with the question, it is easy. All you do is answer the question. Who did she say was teaching the class? Or whom, oh, did you, she, whatever, say was teaching the <coughs> class? We would answer this question by saying, we're going to fill in he, him. Would we say she said him was teaching the class? No. No, we'd say she said he was teaching the class. So if you do that full and complete answer, who did she say was teaching the class? She said he was teaching class. Well, look, there's no M there, right? So we know we're going to use who. No M. Okay, so who did she say was teaching the class? Who should I talk to? Whom should I talk to? I should talk to yeah. him, right? You just do he or him. I should talk to him. Okay, so that makes that whom, right? Because we got the him. Once you get the him, you're good to go. Um, I should talk to he, I should talk to him. Okay, here's another one. Now, once we move away from questions, it gets a little trickier. You have to kind of play with the words. But again, all we're going to do is replace this, the who and the whom, with he and him. Jim is the one who told me. Jim is the one whom told me. It's going to end up in a weird sentence. But we've got to think about which one is more correct. Jim is the one he told me. Jim is the one him told me. 
he, right? Because if we just get rid of Jim as the one, he told me or him told me, he. Right? So when you're not doing a direct question and doing that answer, it ends up kind of, sounds like Yoda a little bit, backwards it does speak. Okay, um, so finally, oh, so those are the two tricks with the who whom. okay? So if you think about it, like the more I started thinking about this and like challenging myself to do it just when I did it, now I can do it like that, it's cool. But for a while it was hard, I still was like, I still don't know which one it is, right? But the more I did it, what have, so there's a very popular bumper sticker that's got a little dog paw on it. You may have seen this, and it's from like the Humane Society, and it says, who saved who? And so the point is, you know, you go rescue a dog, and like, you know, your, your animals save you too. They're loving, and as we call them in our house, we love our little brats, so. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's part of me, there's this English teacher voice in my head, and that when I walk by that, I'm like, it should be who saved whom. And then I'm like, then the other part of me says, shut up, English teacher. So yeah, right? Because does that sound right? Who saved whom? Like that sounds all like you're just trying to be an asshole about being knowing who and whom, right? Who are you? The door is saying, who are you? Well, there's who, also who? an episode on Friends where I think Ross is like, who? He keeps like correcting everybody uh -huh. and they like tell him to shut up. Uh -huh. I don't know exactly. If you've seen it Exactly, no, I haven't. But but that's the kind of thing, right? And that's why you make those choices. The, when the door is saying, who are you? It should be, whom are you? You are he, you are him. Now, no, you are him. When it's so, a man? Is it only when you're saying he? But so when you say no, she? no, you can use it for men and women. I'm just using the he, him, because she doesn't end with an M. It's not shem. So that way you know whom, and it's just the M thing. It's because the M's match, right? That's it. Yeah, just remember if there's a if there's a you know, it doesn't matter male or female. This is a pretend figure out the grammar check. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so gender doesn't matter there. It's just I'm just trying to say M and M. Right. So but yeah, no, there are a whole lot of things that don't match in actual agreement, but do we say and I actually think I don't know if who and whom will stay around like that. I kind of suspect they may kind of can they fade out and just go to one over time, or the one it may be like the I me thing, that it may be who ends up being like just kind of informal and whom becomes formal, because usage is not determined by what the rules are. Usage is determined by the way people use it. That's why it's called usage. There's a difference between the rule and the way we use it. So. The way we talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I mean, the way dictionaries are made aren't by somebody saying, here's a word, everybody use it. No, they go out and they say, how are people using words? And then they write that shit down. And they are a record of how we use words. So. All right, a couple of other little agreement things. One is making sure your logic agrees. And this is one of my <laughs> favorite examples from a student essay. And when I pointed it out to her, she went, oh, okay. Um, Finally, I heard those three words I've been waiting for. Will you marry me? And I read it when I'm reading it. I'm reading, it's like it's like one of the emblem essays. And I'm reading it, and it's great. And those three words I've been waiting for, and I was expecting I love you. It was like, wait, wait that's not three words. That's four words, right? So it should be, finally, I heard the four words, the words I've been waiting for. Will you marry me? Right? So just... Double check your logic there, okay? And that's stuff that often a computer won't catch. Um, it does catch a lot of logical things, but there, those are the places it slips through. Um, and then also, people stay healthy when you eat well and exercise. That's really nice that if Kelly eats well and exercise, everybody stays healthy. One of my favorites for a while was an ad for testosterone for men, and the ad said, it's a TV ad, and it said, when you reach 40, men's testosterone goes down. And I'm like, oh shit, I ruined it for all of men. I reached 40, oh, no. they're all their testosterone went down, right? And so we've kind of already talked about that, you know, with a lot of you, we've talked about that avoiding use. And it is those kinds of examples, right? Use you when you're writing a letter, when you're <coughs> talking directly to someone. I'm using you because I am talking directly to y'all. 
you use you when you're talking to me, right? But when we're writing, who do we mean? Right? Do we mean dragons, teachers, consumers, viewers, students? I don't know. Crazy crack I don't know. All right. Um, people stay healthy when they eat well and exercise. That's who we meant. So if you just think about you know the kind of logic behind what you're saying, you can see these are largely about logic, like with the I, me, the who, whom. When we do that kind of substitute or replacement thing and just look at the kind of base sentence or using that who, whom to kind of match up those M's or not helps us out. Um, and then the, with the, like the, the book, including the extra chapters, you know, is boring. When we understand those commas are there for extra information, we take that out and just look see what matches, it helps us figure that out, so. Cool? Extra special, there we go. Yeah, grammar do again. Wasn't even too bad, too bad. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's almost all the grammar stuff we're gonna do, so. I really do like this end screen, and I didn't have AI help me with that, isn't that nice? I like that, yeah. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. I didn't put all those little squares in there at one, all, you know, all at once, so, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, let's definitely save that. Okay, <coughs> excellent, excellent. And that, that's up there somewhere, so. All right, so what are we doing? Okay, now that you've kind of gone through, or that you have gone through um, the reading again, what... Um, were you able to get some notes down, some stuff like that? Yeah, exactly. Um, what's going to be most helpful for you, from me, right now? And I don't have a lot of food. Cookies would be great. I don't have cookies. I have to buy cookies. I'll make sure we have cookies for for. Um, yeah. I may get the old school ones, you know, just the ones that your grandma and all of that in the, the, the cabinet or the cookie jar or something. You know, those ice cream filled ones, the Oreos, not Oreos. Were those the one your grandma always had? I didn't have grandma, so I don't know. I mean, I did. <laughs> My parents did not like spring from the ground or, you know, born of aliens from outer space, but I never knew them. They died before. That's the surprise of having older parents. Are you a Batman? Just kidding. What? I just thought you were Batman. Could you help me out? Yeah, you know, so it is what it is. It's, it's kind of those things like, you know, I tell my friend who has six kids that I got mine right the first time because I only have one. And I literally cannot imagine six kids or my mom, there were four of us or even two or three. Like, what, what's, your, what's in your life you get used to? Right. Then when but then, like twelve kids. Yeah. Tribes and kids. Yeah. And but then my friend, you know, how could we? I couldn't imagine her without her six. Mm -hmm. You know. So, you know, life is largely what you lose. Well, we're talking with this. You're writing. Where do you feel you are? What do you want advice on before you're turning this in? Do you want to just get together and share a little bit, real quick? What I'm asking you. What do you want? Nothing. Oh. Yeah. I mean, other than, than notes on today's stuff, but oh. you're not turning in your notes about the they say, I say introduction. I mean, because, know. yeah, because, um, here, let me do this. Watch, here, I've got this open. Oh, wait, not that one. Close that one. No, we don't want to save that one. Okay. Let's go to this one. That's not. Ah, there we go. Watch, here we are right here format conferences so <coughs> this is how we do this oh this becomes the 27th we get rid of this hope that that didn't mess it up did that mess up my step oh dude control z remember undoes things right you messed it up. Let's undo it. Delete. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So what we do is we have this. We have the 27th 
we have, what does that make it? 32, this is gonna be September 30, October 2, October 4, and then 7 and 9. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just pushes back. We're dropping. So what we're doing is we're we're dropping the workshop day, but I'm leaving everything else the same oh, for right now. Okay, until we get back. Okay? okay. So what you need to do is, and here's what I will do. And let me just go in and fix that. Um, oh. Because we won't be here Friday. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to be. We're not going to be in class Friday. We'll be in conference. Okay. So what you need to do, let me just do this real quick because it's making me crazy. There we go. All right. All right. I might want to change that bottom one. But what you need to do is no class, just come to your scheduled conference, okay? And I'll get this up online. And, but I'm going to do the rest of the schedule this afternoon, so I'll also have one of these printed for you during conference, okay? And I'll put them on my door if you want to <coughs> print out before then, okay? Um, but, so, what we have is no, no class, just come to your scheduled conference. You're going to have that summary response to the introduction due, okay? What my job will be do is while we're in conference, I will make sure that by the time we get back, I have the, because by that time you have three, so you've done half of the summary responses you need to do. Now, we're going to go ahead. We have three more readings to do. We want to do the readings. I will be like, I need to see the notes on the readings. But again, if you want to use two of the, you know, or one or two of the summary responses we're doing from the 1301 to meet your six, I'm fine with it, okay? But you just need to turn it in on Blackboard too, right? So like if we came to, say you do this summary response on the article you find in, in English 1301, um, and you're like, you know what? I liked that. That was easy peasy. I'll play the game. I'll read. I'll do the outline. I'll do the notes for the they say, I say this, the first chapter. But I'm going to turn this one in as my summary response for 1301 and 311. Then you just go to the next um, summary response we have, which will be number four, right? And so this is the one we're doing. But if you're like, you know what? This is the one from the 1301. It's a summary response. I'll turn it in there. I'll be like, cool. I'll grade it. Okay. So you're gonna give it to me there, and that way, I'm just saying that. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm saying it can be. We're doing two in 1301, and if you would like to substitute either of those 1301 summary responses for one of these that we have left to do, you can. Okay. Right? Just turn it in like when this stuff is due. Yeah. Okay. So. Because we have a summer response yeah. for the they exactly. say, mm -hmm. I say. Yeah. So this one is due, the introduction one is due during conference. And then you're going to be reading this one. So you need to read, you need to take the notes, you need to do that no matter what. Okay? But if at the end of conference you're like, I really don't want to do a summary response for this. I've read it. i got the knowledge, Kelly. We'll talk about it. Right? But you're like, I don't really want to write about that. I'm letting you choose. You've already got one that you had to do for the other class, and, our, and you can just slip it in there, and I'll be like, oh, okay, I'll count it for both. Okay? Yeah. So, so you need to read it. So I am expecting that you know you will have notes for it, and then the um, the response. Yeah, the, the the outlining paper for it. But the whole written response, your choice. But this one that's coming up, turn this one in. Okay. So the first three. And that one is due when again? I'm sorry. This one is due, on let's Blackboard? see. Let's is look at the, the schedule. Or is that one like a whole different writing? No, no, this is the um, INRW, so. This one is due by the, oh, here, let me change <laughs> yeah, this yeah, date okay. too, right? <coughs> oh, yeah, here. Look here, Kathy. Mm -hmm. All right, so emblem conferences. This is due by the four, by the, oh. Well, when do y'all want it due? I mean, really? The fourth. The fourth? Yeah, the fourth. Okay. Yeah. By the fourth. Okay. There we go. All right. So here, I'll even make it bigger. Okay. <laughs> All right. So make sure and turn that one in. That's the one that's due. So 
That way you'll have, you know, this coming week, make sure you get it turned in that second week, and then you're gonna do the reading if you need. I think you'll probably all have a bunch of them, but just in case you need them, right? Um, the outline um, for some of the responses right there, okay? Um, so I will um, finish this up. What you know right now is conferences start next time, so we don't have class, okay? Yeah. While we're in conference, you need to do the 1301 stuff for the 1301 class and our 311 stuff. This is it. You're turning this in by the 4th, and then you're going to read this, make your notes on it, do the outline form, and then you come back in and we'll talk about it and that kind of thing. Because the knowledge in it is helpful and important. You know, they've already <coughs> told you they're going to give you all these secret formulas for writing like a college writer. So you want to read it and get their secret formulas, okay? And that way, as we move into the next level, our next two essays, the rest of the class is all formal writing. And that way, you have that to start with. So. Cool? The library is really nice and cool. I know they are. They always have candy. I always no, I was thinking they're cool, like physically cool. Oh. <laughs> See, they'll know whether you're seeing cool or not. But yes, they're actually both kinds of cool. So, anybody else questions? Yeah. For 1301, the cover letter, it's mm -hmm. going to say it's today, right? Yeah, the cover letter. It's on backboard and it says test. Oh, that's my bad then. Yeah, I'll fix that. I'll fi I can fix that right now. Yeah. I, I, I got the power. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Well, I can fix it later after I stop recording so I don't show everybody's grades off. Yeah. Uh huh. There we go. The summary responses are not graded yet. What's that? Uh, summary responses are graded. No, huh? Yes. What I'll do, that'll be my job. Is what we're doing now. So when we come back, yeah. I'll have those graded with comments. You will. And then that way, over the kind of next week or so, when we're back in the 311, you'll be working on kind of some other ones. But that way, I can sit down kind of with everybody in class, like one at a time, and just spend 10, 15 minutes of each class kind of saying, oh, look here. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Bye. Have a good one. Make sure you're all signed up for conferences and come see me. Okay. What's that?